Hi, I'm Ben from Kalash's Data Team, and today I'm going to be talking you through uh, the starter code for the REST API. Uh, so just to start off, uh, you're going to want to open up the uh, starter zip file, um, and you should see two files in there, one of which is going to be a Jupyter Notebook, and one of which is just going to be a Python client. Um, so you're going to want to open up the Jupyter Notebook, uh, start off by importing the libraries. I've gone ahead and filled in my uh, demo information here. So you're going to want to go and make a uh, account on demo.kalshi.co. Once I do that, uh, you'll see I'm able to log into the exchange and then check on the current exchange status. I see that the exchange is active and trading is active. Uh, after that, I might want to explore all the markets that Kalshi has to offer. Um, so I'm going to uh, run the above cell and you'll see that I not only am returned uh, market information, but I'm also returned a cursor. Um, that raises the question, what is a cursor? Um, cursors are how Kalshi handles pagination. Um, so instead of there being uh, page numbers and page sizes, uh, cursor pagination allows you to never have data loss. There will never be data drift. Um, so here you see an example of how uh, this cursor pagination scheme works. Um, we're going to pass in the cursor uh, that was provided previously into the cursor field of this next API call. Um, and you'll see that we get new uh, markets, right? And we also get a new cursor here. Um, so let's say that uh, after we've done this, we now want to look at uh, market data, but on the event level. Um, so we would use the get event endpoint and the get event endpoint would not only provide us with uh, the market payloads, but it would also tell us uh, if the event is mutually exclusive. It would tell us what category it's in. Um, it would tell us what series it belongs to, all that other sort of information. Continuing on, we see we can also go and get uh, the response of the series. Um, this tells us how frequently the market is going to be listed. So here we see the NASDAQ 100 weekly uh, is listed weekly. Um, uh, next, let's see what would happen if we wanted to look at the market history for a particular market. Um, so here I'm passing in uh, a limit of 100 just so I can get the last 100 uh, price changes. Um, and I'm also going to be looking at just, you know, the the most recent amount of time. Um, I'm going to run this and you'll see that I will actually, I not only return the market history uh, response, but I'm also going to query uh, the order book. Um, in querying the order book, I can also pass in the query parameter depth, uh, which tells me how much of the order book I actually want to be looking at. Sometimes in very uh, liquid markets, you don't want to be getting all the information. You'd be totally fine just getting the top of the book. So here we see uh, the yes prices and the no prices. Uh, and same thing here, we see yes price, uh, yes bid, yes ask, no bid, no ask, all that sort of information. Um, now that we have a little bit of an understanding of what's happening in the exchange, we might want to uh, go about placing a trade. Um, to go about placing a trade, we first want to check in on our balance. So I see here that my balance is $282.67. Um, I might want to even check on my positions. Um, I see here that I have a couple different positions. Um, well, they're actually only only in one market. So in the testing five market here on demo, uh, it seems that I have a uh, a position here uh, of uh, 10, 10 units of exposure um, and I have 30 uh, resting order units um, and I've paid one cent of fees. Um, my overall position is negative 22, which represents a no position of 22 units. Um, continuing on, I might also want to see, you know, I have these positions now, how those positions come to be. So I would use the get fills endpoint to see which of my orders had been filled and then had been converted into positions. So I get that information here. Uh, continuing on, I might also want to see if there's any settlements that have happened to any of my positions since the last time I was here. Uh, I go here, I see that there's actually no settlements since last time I checked in. Um, and that brings us to the final step, which is placing an order. Uh, to place an order, uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Um, one of the important things, uh, or I should say one of the fun things you can do on Kalshi uh, is there is an equivalence between yes and no prices uh, in that yes price equals 100 minus the no price. So whichever you feel most comfortable with, pass in yes price, pass in no price. Um, you can also choose what side you're passing in from, whether it's yes buy or no sell. Uh, there's lots of different equivalences. Um, and we, we give you some examples of those here at the bottom. Um, but just to show you how this works, uh, run this and I get a, uh, this is the payload that I'm passing through and this is the payload response.